So uh, we are going to jump into Mongoose Embedding next. Uh, let me find that lecture. And uh, so essentially, I've kind of already covered what we're doing with this. Uh, but essentially, we're going to start uh, with EJS partial views. And then we are going to define some schemas for embedding sub documents. And then we are going to embed a sub document in its related document. So we're going to be able to uh, do that by the end of this lecture. Uh, we are going to be using the same project that we are already working in that we literally just left. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is implement partials in this project. Uh, so essentially what I'm going to do as part of this, like you can see that there is a ton and ton and ton and ton of code in here. Um, quite a bit of this is also CSS. I'm not going to go over this with you too much. Um, that's just how it's going to be. Um, I like, I'm not going to go in and type all of this out. Uh, like by hand, I'm pretty much going to be copying and pasting most of this. So just as a heads up for how this is going to work, um, if you have questions about anything I'm doing as I, as I go through this, uh, I definitely let me know. I would be glad to answer any questions, but I'm not going to walk through like setting up an HTML head line by line, like we've been doing that stuff since you know one. So I'm pretty much just going to be copying and pasting this into our new partials. So. Let's go ahead and build all this stuff out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make all this stuff. So first thing I'm going to do is make a new directory that's going to hold all of my partials. So all my partials are going to go inside of this uh, partials directory in my views. And I'm going to go ahead and make a few of these partials. So the first one I'm going to make is going to be my HTML head. Uh, and these partials are EJS files, just like everything else we've been working with so far. So I'm going to make that file. Uh, as you can see, probably or guess by the name rather, this is going to be where all of the head uh, of our HTML goes. Um, I'm also going to make a nav. A partial for the nav. So I'm going to have view, partials, and then nav. And then lastly, I'm going to also have a footer. Why is the closing head tag in the nav EJS? Is that? So we're going to talk about that here in a second. Okay. Because I know it's a little weird. <laughs> 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 All right, so we have our three files created here. So first off, what I'm going to do is in our HTML head, I'm going to copy over everything here. I'll also go ahead and send this out in Slack for you as well. All right, so. This is most of our head, but not all of it. As you can see, uh, there is no head closing tag as part of this document. This does not exist here. Instead, it's going to exist in our nav. So I'm going to copy this over into our nav, and then we'll talk about it. Does anyone have any guesses of why I would do this? In case we want to add a specialized style sheet to um, that specific part, or, um, like EJS. 100%. So later on, you'll see that. that. Yeah. Okay. So later on, you're going to see whenever we build out our pages, we are going to include our HTML head. Remember that looks like this. And the head tag starts in this file. 
So essentially, just for clarity here, um, what this is going to look like, or whenever it's compiled down, it's going to look like this. That is what this is what this file is, right? And then this link was already here. And this file is specific to this movie slash index.ejs. So this style sheet, you can tell kind of by the name, this is, is going to live in style sheets slash movies slash index CSS. This is going to be a specific style sheet for our movies slash index.ejs. So anything that is specific to this file, I can throw that in between these two include statements where we are going to be importing our partials onto our page. I'll cover this again whenever we actually have it over in our uh, over in our editor in VS Code, but just kind of give you a preview of where this is going. That's where this is going. Cool. So, uh, as part of this nav, you can see that I'm doing a couple things in here. So, uh, first off, I have this thing that we've never seen before. Uh, this is actually going to be a font awesome icon. I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, but this is essentially going to give us a little icon on our page that looks good. I've also got a couple links. And these links, as part of them, uh, they might have a class or they might not have a class, uh, the set class equals active. And that is going to be dependent on what the title that we're passing to this page is. So whenever we come in and we look at our controller, we're eventually going to be passing in the title to these pages. We're going to have a title from our find function. We are uh, going to also have a title for our new movie that we'll eventually pass. We'll have titles for all these things. You're saying that the title parameter of, of the document. Yep, okay. exactly. So this will have a title and it's going to be all movies. Just to give you a tiny preview. We're going to be passing a title to every one of these pages. We have to pass a title to every one of our pages because that's what is in our head, our HTML head. We are the title equals, or sorry, never mind. Yeah. So in here, in our partial, our HTML head, we have a title. So if we don't pass this variable to this EJS uh, view, we're going to get an error. It's going to say title is not defined because we wouldn't have passed a title. So every single one of our pages from now on that we add onto this project is going to have a title passed to it. And in our nav bar, we are going to look at that. And we're going to look at that title and see, is the title add movie? If the title is add movie, then I'm going to add this class. If the title isn't add movie, I'm not going to add anything. What does class active mean? Yeah. So this is going to correspond to some CSS that we do here in a second. This is essentially going to change the color of the active page. 
So all of that we haven't gotten to yet. That's what's, that's just for. Yeah, this is for, just, we're laying some groundwork here. Yep. Yep, got it. Cool. So uh, that, those are two links that we've got in our nav bar. Uh, we'll be adding a link here in a little bit to this also. It's going to have pretty much the same format. Uh, we're going to check the title and see what it is. And uh, if it is a match, then we're going to set the class on it to active. And then finally, to round all this out, we have a footer.ejs. This footer.ejs is real simple. Can anyone kind of guide me as to why I might be using this? We didn't close them one thing out. Yeah, exactly. So also this way, whenever we have a uh, view in here that we're building, our HTML is still going to be formatted correctly. So because this stuff isn't going to exist here in a second on this page. We don't want to leave this stuff hanging out down here because they don't have matching tags on this page. So our like our indentation is going to be weird. Essentially, by putting this into our footer, one, it gives us the ability to add a footer later. And then two, uh, it allows our indentation on our actual EJS pages that we're going to build. It's going to allow that indentation to be correct. What do you mean when you say it gives us the ability to add a third layer? Uh, so we would be able to come in. I think you might have misheard me. I said we can come in and add a footer later. Third later. I did mishear you. Thank you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> would. Um... Would the partials work with, say, like the table because you have variables in there? Um, as long as you are passing in those same variables, yeah, totally. Okay, cool. Cool. So those are our three partials. Those are all built out. Anyone have any questions about these three partials? So I do want to touch on our font awesome icon that we've got here. So let me show that off real quick. So if y'all want to go to fontawesome.com, so font awesome is a really fun tool that I like a whole lot. Um, once you kind of graduate from using like emojis and stuff and all that, um, this is kind of a good like next step pop up from that, I would say. Uh, so Font Awesome essentially is going to be a, uh, it's going to provide us vector icons. Uh, so what does that mean? We can come in here and we can look at all the icons. And I'm going to check out our free ones. So we can see in here, they have over 1,600 icons that we're able to use. Uh, they have all kinds of stuff in here. All kinds of stuff, like a wild amount of icons. Um, a lot of these will be re related to actions that you can take on a page, uh, such as Let's just come in here and search for like save. Hey, look, it's save icons. That might be super useful to have in an application. If we want to save something. Maybe we want to like spruce up a button, make it look a little bit better. So we can use these icons in our projects for free. Uh, they also have like corporate icons as well. Uh, so for example, say you want to link off to a Twitter, boom, Twitter icon. Cool stuff. So uh, 
what we have found for you and pre-selected is this film icon right here. And it shows us right here how we can use this in our project. We've got some HTML that we can just copy right out of here, throw into our project, and boom, it's going to work after we hook up our um, hook up our kit that they give us to this. So in here, you can see all we have to do is copy this, and boom, we place it in our project, and we have access to this after we have the kit. Your natural question from this is how do we get a kit? So all you have to do is sign up. I already have an I a um, login with them, uh, but you're able to create an account for free. Uh, you'll just throw in an email here and they'll send you a kit code that you're able to use. Uh, today, you have access to my kit code, so you don't need to do this whenever you go and build out your own projects. Uh, please get your own kit code. Don't reuse mine today. Go ahead. You can reuse it. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Uh, but I highly recommend signing up for uh, Font Awesome if this appeals to you. Uh, it's just going to be at fontawesome.com slash start. Uh, once you have a kit, they'll send you that code. Um, and you are able to view that in here. View that kit code. You just go to your account and go to kits. This is my kit that I have. You just click in here, and then this is how you use it. And you can see I've already done all this work for you. This is already in your head, so you don't have to do any work. But uh, just showing you how you would go about uh, doing this on your own, wherever you do your projects later. All right. And you can see, hey, they have all kinds of different stuff that you can do in here. Uh, space, sci-fi, travel, weather. Hey, if you're doing something with weather, that sounds really, really cool. Man, all of this stuff is fun, fun, fun. Like, hey, thunder clouds and rain and a little moon and snowflake, like all this cool stuff. Wow, how fun. You got Cloudy with a chance of meatball icons in there. Yeah, 100%. With cloud meatball. <laughs> how could you go wrong with that? Are there any... Um... So I've heard of Font Awesome before. It's pretty cool. Are there any reasons you pick Font Awesome over other live, uh, other collections like Noun Project or Bootstrap Icons or Matilda Icons or I guess any of the other ones? Any yeah. particular reasons? Um, so I, if you are kind of, if you're graduating for this and you want to start paying for something, I think Noun Project is a good place to start. Um, the downside, the potential downside of using uh, the noun project is that you have to provide attribution unless you pay for these things. Um, they aren't like wildly expensive. Um, they're, I believe, three bucks for each one. Oh, 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 oh. I don't want to create an account. I want to sign in. There we go. Um, so yeah, the downside of these is that you have to pay for them if you don't want to provide attribution to whoever you are uh, using this for. Um, so you'll see that like, for example, in Notion, this is pretty much all of our icons are from uh, the Noun Project. So uh, we've paid them for their work and uh, you know, it's, good to support people in your projects. Like I said, these are like three bucks. So uh, for each one of these icons. So if you have like particularly like a logo or something like that, that you can find inside of the noun project, um, I would totally recommend doing that. Uh, just a quick little way to, you know, kind of spruce up your site. Uh, you can come in here, you can, you know, give the same like color that you want. You can see a little preview of it right here. All kinds of fun stuff.
Um, yeah, so that's the noun project specifically. You, what else did you ask about, John? Oh, just like bootstrap icons, material icons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same um, sort of deal, I'm guessing. Yeah, like, yeah, same sort of deal. Um, the, I really like Font Awesome because it, like all of this is free. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to give any attribution unless you want. Uh, I would highly recommend at least shouting out a little thank you in your readme or something like that. Uh, just so you know, you've given some credit where this is due. Um, but because there's obviously work that's gone into these. Uh, but one of the reasons I like Font Awesome is because it's so easy to use. You just throw in the script that you get from them into your uh, header. And then after that, you just come in and you say, hey, I want a Meteor. And you click on this and it's copied into your clipboard and boom, all you have to do after that is this. Let's say we want to make this 2x, have it be twice as big as it would normally. I can come back here and all of this is going to work break now, I bet. Oh, actually, I don't have this partial being used yet. That's why this doesn't work. Uh, just for funsies, let's go ahead and throw in our nav. You don't have to follow along with this. I'm just kind of working a little bit ahead. This should work. Oh no. We're broken. Uh, it's because I don't have the correct HTML here or the correct CSS, I mean. We'll cover this in a sec. We'll see how that looks. All right, cool. So I'll do all of this actually. Okay, so um, that's just kind of a little uh, preview of like how Font Awesome works. Like I said, highly recommend it. Very cool. All right, so now um, what we are going to do in here next is I'm just going to copy over this EJS out of uh, here and throw it into our uh, project. So this is essentially all the same as yesterday. Uh, if there's any difference, I will call that out to you. Um, so essentially this is going to go into our index.ejs. Uh, there are a couple of changes. You can see that we're only displaying the title and the release here now, uh, and we're actually already specifying a path in here for a link off to a show page where we're going to have the additional details displayed there. So that is what is changing on this page. And you can see here uh, this uh, syntax where we can include our partials in our project. So essentially we use um, this little uh, new squid that we've got here. And this is an EJS outputs value. So essentially what this allows us to do is output HTML. That's going to be the difference between this little dash and the equal sign. The equal sign just prints out text. This dash prints out HTML which is what we want because we're linking to another file that has a bunch of HTML in it. So we wanna print everything in this file as it is directly. So you can see in here, I'm including my partial head uh, from our, our HTML head and also our nav. You can see I need to go up a directory to be able to do this because this index.ejs lives inside of movies. So I need to go up back to my views directory and then back down into the partials directory and then into nav.ejs for this partial right here. Uh, for my uh, HTML head, I need to do that same thing. Leave the movies directory back into views, go into partials, 
get HTML head. Same thing for the footer. Sorry, Any questions? Can yeah. you repeat that? How, do, how does it know it's leaving views? Uh, we are not leaving views, but we're leaving movies. So because partials, because our partials directory lives inside of our views directory. So we are we are currently in index.ejs where we are doing this include statement. So we need to leave the movies directory, go back up to views. That's what this dot dot is doing. And then we're going down into partials with slash partials. And then we're selecting our HTML dash head file. And that is the HTML that's going to live here. So this HTML, our partials are literally taking everything out of here and they're putting it right here. That's what's going on here. So this include is doing this. This next include, where we're doing our nav partial, is taking all of the HTML out of here and is putting it right here, just like this. This is what our partials accomplish. Are there any questions about this? Cool, cool. All right, so uh, moving on from this, uh, the rest of this should move pretty quickly. Uh, you can see here uh, we are doing what uh, John was talking about earlier with our label and our input. Uh, so uh, just to give you some contrast, I am going to leave some of this around and just take a little portion out of here real quick. So in our new.ejs, this is what we are, no, not that. This is what we are currently using. And then below here, this is going to be new. So both of these formats provide the same level of accessibility. With this format that we're using currently, we're wrapping the input inside of our label. So our input is implicitly tied directly to this label because it exists inside of it. The format that we're going to be switching to, our input lives outside of our label. This input is not nested like it is up here. So we need to tell it that this is a label for the title input. And you can see that we have to give our input an ID whenever we use this method. Does this basically... This... Go ahead. What, what, what's the, I mean, uh... I think it looks better than the nested one, but what's the kind of reasoning if they're both equal uh, accessibility? Uh, so you'll see here in a second that whenever we apply the CSS to this page, this makes this form look a little bit better, essentially. Got it. Um, okay. It's a little bit easier for us to apply certain stylings to each one of these elements if they're not nested like they are. So that's what we're going to be doing. And that's why we're splitting it up like this. Uh, could you do the same styling that we're going to be doing if you targeted it in this way? Yes, absolutely. Um, it would just be a lot more work. And I also agree, I think this looks a little bit cleaner. Uh, the only downside of this is of course, you have to give your inputs IDs, so. Uh, but this four ties in this label to this input. 
because our four matches our ID. So uh, that is what is different on this page. I'm going to go ahead and copy this over, just paste it over everything else that already existed. David, this is uh, a weird question. What is the actual relationship between the label and the input? I mean, you could you could put them not beside each other, right? You could, yes. So what's like yeah. the actual value in in saying this input belongs to this label when they're just two things that belong on the screen? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so whenever you are labeling it in this way, essentially this makes it accessible for screen readers to say the label for this input is this. We are directly saying the text in here relates to this input. This Thank input you. is going to be a title. Thank you. Uh, I will also go ahead and just slack these out for us as well, since we're not in a lecture. So this partial include whatever, this goes in the new .ejs. Uh, this, yes, the one I just sent out in Slack is for your index.ejs. Uh, the next one I'm going to send is going to be for uh, movies uh, slash new. And that's the one we're currently looking at on the screen. All right. We also have an updated uh, index.ejs as well. Go ahead and just move this in here. Uh, again, because we are building out our nav, we have our nav partial, we no longer need these anchor tags in here. Because they're now included in this nav. All right. We'll also, again, need to adjust our res.render for all of our controllers functions. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and do that in our controllers, in our index. We need to be passing the title. One second, David. In, in, um... In um, views slash in yes. our view index EJS, what do, what do we have in that file now? Uh, we have this. Uh, I oh, you mean sorry, views index? Not, yeah, not movies index, views index. This right here. I'll slide okay, next, okay. Thank you. All right. David, I think your if statement or your, your ternary earlier was looking for the all movies uh, to have a capital M. It sure um, was. Here, let me just close my load. Put this in there. Cool. This should be correct. Let me start that out for you as well. Good catch, thank you. And then we also need to pass a title to our new movie as well on our controller. So we need to throw a comma in here and then pass an object. All this is going to hold is a title of add movie. Two. 
All right. Now, finally, we have one last adjustment to make, and that is to our actual uh, index route. Not a big change here. We're just going to be calling this Mongoose Movies instead of Express. All right, so that is all of our EJS built. We've done all the work we need to do there. If we go back and we go to these pages, uh, they should essentially look as they looked before. They'll have a little nav bar up here. Oh boy, that's a problem. Damn, yeah, I, I got that error too. Whoops, that. that is going to be in our index.ejs. This M just needs to be movie. Wait, hold on. This is in movies slash index.ejs. Sorry about that. What did you change? Uh, oh, this got it. M okay. on line 21 should movie. instead be movie. Movie dot underscore ID? Yep. Well, and that is why we sanity check. Make sure we did everything right. Perfect. Oh, hey, there's our little meteor. Um, I'm still getting the same message. You're still getting the same message after changing line 21. Uh, yep. Uh, Interesting. Refresh one more time for me. Yeah, still. Cool. What's your title screen? is not defined? Yeah, I'll show you. Uh, title is not defined. Cool. Let's see it. If we click on the details link right now, it's it should be redirecting because we haven't made that yet, right? Correct. Yes. I'm saying 404. I'll give you 404. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So this is saying your title is not defined. So it's saying in your, where you're doing your include on line 12 in your partials HTML head, it wants a title, but there is no title. So what we need to do is back in our code, go back to our controller and we need to, we need to pass this view, the data that we want it to have. Okay. Um, so this should be in your index and you do have a title. I think How at the top fun. you might have spelled title incorrectly if you scroll up. Oh no, never mind. That looks right. It doesn't look like you're passing movies though. We'll need to fix that eventually. So let's just go ahead and do it now. Okay. Um so you just need after line 14 there. Just on a new line, uh, movies colon movies. And one she's passing add movie and the other is all movies. I don't know if that's going to make a difference though. Uh, that should be what we want. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. Never mind. Yeah. Go ahead and restart your server for me. Uh, sure. Um, how do I do that? Control Command R. Uh, in your terminal, uh, just where you're running Nodemon currently, uh, click in there and do Control C. Oh, okay. And then run Nodemon one more time, and then go back to your browser. Instead of doing the form submission here, can you just go to localhost 3000 for me. And then go to all movies. There we go. Thank you. Yep. 
David, can you push? I would love to push, yes. Could you share your ad movie one more time, please? Ad movie. Uh, uh, the, the actual controller. I mean, within your browser. Oh, within the browser. Yes. We haven't confirmed this works yet, but it should look like this. It's pretty broken right now. Just we'll fix it up here in a second with some CSS. All right. So. Uh, all of our pages are now working. We have our ad movie, we have all movies, uh, and we have our index view as well. So Fongo's movies here, everything works. So now what we need to do is go in and add our CSS. So the first thing that we're going to do in here, uh, you'll see back in our partials in our HTML head, I have a style sheet already uh, specified for us. So the first thing that we're going to do in here is rename uh, the style.css to our main.css. This is going to be our main CSS style sheet that applies to all of our pages where we put this partial. So we want the stuff in here to be pretty broad. So I'm going to rename this to main. Now I should be able to go back to my browser and refresh, boom. This looks a little bit better than it just did. But we've still got some work to do. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is copy over all of this CSS. Uh, you can see we've got that kind of same CSS reset that we've been using before. Uh, that same CSS reset can carry over into this unit as well. And something you'll notice in here is that we're using our active class on our anchor tags that are in our nav. So this is going to make any active page that we've got in, or any active link with the class of active, it's going to have a color of white. It's also going to be that white color whenever we hover over it. The background color is going to change on it too. Uh, here, we're also uh, specifying that whenever uh, a link has been visited, it should be the same color as it was originally. So with this in our main.css, let's see how our page looks now. Woo, quite a bit different. Sorry, did you change the um, naming or is that a new file, main.css or? Yes, uh, this yeah. is main.css. I just renamed the existing oh, style. Rename it. Okay, got it. But you can feel free to just wipe that file and have a new one instead. Entirely up to you. Okay. All right, so we have this main.css file set up and we're seeing quite a bit of style difference on our page. And you'll see that because we are on this all movies link and the title here is all movies, this is getting the active class applied to it up here. So it's white, so it picks up there's white. We've also got this head movie link as well. And whenever we go and visit this link, it turns to white. and our all movies changes to uh, the regular color. All right, so let's fix up our individual pages now. So next thing we're going to want to do is create those individual style sheets. So we need to make a movies index, new and show CSS file. So first thing we're going to do is make a new directory in public, style sheets, and movies. 
Notice here that I'm using the same convention that we've been using everywhere else. I'm going to hold all the style sheets for our movies re resources or pages related to movies inside of a movies directory in this style sheets. So inside of public style sheets, I now have a movies directory. This is where I'm going to put all of my style sheets related to these individual pages. I'm going to have an index, a new, and a show. We're going to add show functionality here in a little bit. We're just getting ahead and making the style sheet now. We don't have a place to put it right now, but we will here pretty soon. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just copy these directly out of the lecture. I'll throw it in Slack too for you. There you go. And now any CSS that's tied directly to these pages we can throw inside of these individual files. And you can see in our EJS, we're actually already making use of these. So we've got a style sheet slash movies slash index.css. We've already done this work here for you, uh, but this is where you would put anything specific to this uh, EJS file. So those, those paths to the star, those links to the style sheets, those specific style sheets, that was stuff that we, we didn't, you, we copied and pasted that stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, we copied and pasted this, pasted this stuff. We didn't actually write this from scratch, but uh, this is already pre-set up for you. All right, so let's go ahead and just fill out these CSS files real quick. There's nothing particularly interesting about any of them. Uh, they're just gonna make this look pretty. So I'm just literally gonna run through this real quick and do a copy and paste job on all of it. Um, David, so I don't, I, I think I missed a part um, when you either rename or create a new file of main CSS. Did you link it to anything else yet or not yet? Nope, I didn't. Nope, it's, oh, already, yet, okay. it's, it's already being imported inside of our HTML head. It is already pre-linked. Okay, go on. So we didn't have to like put it anywhere after we created it. Okay, thank you. No problem. And then this is going to be for our show page that we eventually create. So we just threw all of the stuff from the lecture into our different CSS files. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw this in Slack for you just for fun. All right, so. That is all of our refactoring that we needed to do to be able to implement partials. Does anyone have any questions about anything that we covered? Can you show where we are? I know, I know you just showed no, no, where we're using, sorry, I'm gonna make sure I get my file names right. Um, where we're calling in that new main.css. Um, mm -hmm. But where, where are we pulling in these other three files we just set up? So these individual files that we just set up, this show page uh, doesn't exist yet, so we're not pulling it in anywhere. Right. But our index and our new, uh, we're pulling them in up here. Okay. I this that. is our movie style sheet for the index. And then we've also got the new as well. Perfect. Thanks. So anything that we needed to implement that would be specific to this EJS file goes between these two different include statements. Cool. Oh, yeah, I think I just missed us updating that link uh, href. Thank you. Yeah, no problem.
All right. So, um, let's see. I kind of just want to give you all a long lunch. I really don't want to like jump into this and then like get halfway through it and have to interrupt ourselves. So how about we all take a long lunch? So I'll see you in an hour and 17 minutes. Uh, and we will pick up from this point. Y'all have a good one. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. See you in a bit.